Putin unexpectedly fell into a trap that he wanted to avoid at all costs. He wanted the West to find itself in the place of the Soviet Union in the 1980s when America imposed a new round of the arms race. Then the USSR could not cope economically and the United States avoided the race, seeing how the Soviet state could not cope. In today's war with Ukraine, Russia's economic model is holding up for the time being, so the Kremlin is really interested in a truce, realizing that it will not be able to outlast the West. This opinion was expressed by Russian opposition political strategist Stanislav Belkovsky during a conversation with Mark Figin. It is clear to the Kremlin, and Putin is not even going to deny it, that the West's economic reserves are immeasurably greater, which is why Russia is interested in a speedy peace. The analyst noted, the Russian Federation believes that the West does not want a truce, but on the contrary, intends to drag things out in every possible way, weakening the enemy, which is why Russia can conclude that the best path to peace is escalation. Militarization is economically disadvantageous for the West, but the combined forces of the US and Europe still have a greater margin of safety. Belkovsky emphasized, and when Western voters understand that a direct military clash with the Russian Federation is a reality and not a propaganda utopia, they will immediately demand that their rulers make peace with Russia on terms more or less acceptable to the Kremlin. Thus, according to the analyst, objectively, the preconditions for peace negotiations exist despite the fact that both sides completely deny them, and each insists on its own. Ukraine on reaching the 1991 borders and the Russian Federation on fulfilling Putin's conditions announced in June 2024. Ukraine's refusal to join NATO, the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from the territories of the Donetsk, Luhansk, Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. The Ukrainian military has observed chaotic and inaccurate shelling by Russia in the Kursk region. This erratic firing likely involves military personnel who are still in training. Oleksiy Dmitrashkivsky, a spokesman for the military commandment's office in the Kursk region, shared the information in an interview with Glavcom. According to him, during the Russian troops' offensive in the Kursk region, shelling of settlements has increased, with civilian areas also being targeted. They are using anti-aircraft guns, artillery and kamikaze drones. Given the way the attacks are conducted, these drones are controlled by military personnel who are in training. It is noticeable that the shelling is chaotic and the drones are falling mainly on private houses where there are no Ukrainian military, the colonel said. He noted that this is not the first time Russian forces have done this. In 2014, cadets from the artillery school shelled the towns of Ranitne and Ilovaisk in Ukraine's Donetsk region. The regional operational headquarters of the Kursk region decided to evacuate the population from the 15-kilometer border zone with Ukraine. The regional crisis center has decided to mandate the evacuation of towns in the Rilsky and Komotovsky districts located within a 15-kilometer zone near the Ukrainian border, Kursk region Governor Alexei Smirnov said. Those districts encompass dozens of villages and towns with a combined population of less than 40,000 people. According to Radio Svoboda, the Russian language service of Radio Free Europe stroke Radio Liberty, the town of Rilsk with 15,000 residents is not currently subject to the evacuation order. The decision to evacuate residents appears to have been influenced by ongoing clashes in the Rilsky district as reported by the VCHK-OGPU Telegram channel, which claims to offer government insider information. Smirnov previously informed President Vladimir Putin that eight districts in the Kursk region with a total population of 152,000 were under evacuation orders since Ukraine launched its surprise incursion on August the 6th. Kiev has claimed to have advanced several kilometers into Russian territory, capturing scores of towns and villages, including the border town of Sudza. Meanwhile, Moscow asserts that its forces have reclaimed at least a dozen villages in the Kursk region during its recent counter-offensive.